Cactus Jack. Oh my gosh. That looks like a lot. It is a lot, Jack. A barrel full. When do you need them? I need them by today. Gosh, I better use solar res if we're in a hurry. Solar res if you Solar res. Okay, thanks, Jack. I'll have these done by uh, 1 o'clock. <laughs> right. Cactus, Jack Mandu. Okay, I'll have them done in a couple hours. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm going to hopefully demonstrate to you how to laminate wood fins really quick with solar res. This is a batch of wood fins from Cactus Jack Mandu. This is part of the wheelbarrow load. And uh, these, are, these are all fins I need to do for uh, Chris Christensen surfboards. That first batch was kind of a rush, uh, but these uh, do these. It doesn't take long to go through them. It looks like a lot, but it happens so quick when you use the solar res because the resin's so fast. There's no delay. There's no time wasted. So if you were to catalyze the resin and wait around, it would take days to do these mini fins, and this mini could you could be done it in one day. Yeah, um, Gary Fisher, the boss at Solar Res, came by and gave me a new batch of the uh, solar res. And it's, uh, well, all, all their resin is non-yellowing. But this has low VOCs and also really low on the odor. It's the only time you really smell the resin is when it's curing. And there's hard, there's nothing here. Not really. I mean, if you were doing a, a factory full of surfboards, it might be a wee bit of odor, but there's nothing. Uh, what I'm going to put this, use on the fins is 4 ounce. This is excellent. This part's kind of crucial. Make that one side flat. And uh, it's going to go on the pin about like that. And I'm just going to cut a halo of about an inch, inch and a half. Give my, but make, try to keep it kind of even to the uh, template of the pin. Uh, when you're dealing with the solar res, it's activated by the UV rays, not catalysts. And that doesn't mean direct sunshine, that just means the ultraviolet rays. And the ultraviolet rays can bounce and come in and activate the resin, so it's important to block the rays. And now this part is just saturating the wood. Just make sure all the wood's wet. It makes it easier if you don't put it on too thick. That way the glass will be on real tight. If you have too much resin when you're fiberglassing, it's called a float. And it's just excess resin that isn't necessary. Okay, now that the uh, the wood's all saturated. Uh, it's a good idea to put some gloves on just in case you get a little resin on your fingers. And when you're tacking down the cloth like I'm doing here, it's just like when you're laminating a surfboard, you go from the center out. I'll put, it, put the weave on real nice and tight. Okay, now I come back and just brush it on real thin. Make sure you get all the cloth wet and that there's a little bit, you want a little bit of a halo of wet cloth around the uh, template of the pin. That's, you're going to come back with a razor blade after it's tacky and trim the excess fiberglass off. I don't know if you can see this. When I first apply the resin to the glock glass. See how you can see the glass? So it's kind of important that you let it set for just a whisper, like a, a minute or so while you're doing this. And the, 
the fiberglass gets saturated and then it'll disappear. Mike, let's go surfing. Yeah, sure. Hold on a second. Let me uh let me just put this stuff back in the cooler. It'll keep. Yeah, that's the beauty of this stuff. I can walk away from it. As long as it's out of the rays, it's perfect. Let me grab my stuff. Is it pretty good? Yeah, one to two foot. Oh, perfect for me. Great. What about the pugger? Is there room for him? All right. Let's go it. We'll be right back. Man, was that good. Pug met a good little collie girl at the beach. He got a girlfriend at the beach. Jack, thanks for the surf report and taking me for the surf. I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go finish those pins now. Get back to where you started. Yeah, it'll be all right. It'll be just like I left it. This is a. This one's a zero buck board. <sighs> okay, where was I? I think I had one more to do. Okay, um, the fins are all coated, and I've got enough. I got enough resin left over for uh, the other side, but I'm going to put it in the cooler, lower the lid, and then uh, nothing will happen to it. It's ready to go when I after I come back. Uh, when you take it out of the, the sun, out of the, the UV rays, um, it quits going off. Okay, now right now. You can't see it, but the UV rays are bouncing off of the uh, asphalt and coming into this room. So it's, the process has actually started a, wi a wee bit, but this isn't going to take long. Watch this. Yeah, this. Yeah, it's starting to go right now. See that? How long has that been? That 20 seconds? 30 seconds? Yep. Okay, these are ready to come in and cut. And now I'm going to do the other side. It's the same amount of time, another 20 seconds. That's done. I didn't see it. That's hard. I mean, it's not rock hard, but it's flexible. Bring it over here. Get a new razor blade out. And there's a little bit of a technique to it. Uh, you see how these are. Jack made them just ready to go. And now what a good thing to do is start, you don't want to get too much larger than the pin, but just make a cut there. And the same thing at this end, just barely outside of the template of the pin. You don't want too much excess. And then, you see how simple this is? You just follow the template of the pin, give yourself about a, oh, a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch. And just go around the fin. And there it is. Now, if I was just doing one fin, I'd flip it over. And I'm ready to do the other side. Um, this is called the B stage. The resin is still flexible. It hasn't completely gone off yet. And taking it out of the sun, out of the UV rays, stops the process. If I were to put this fin back in the uh, fin, in the sun, it would continue hardening for another minute, and then it would be completely hardened. But right now, while it's soft, and you see it's still flexible, hasn't, it's not completely brittle, it uh, makes it easy to cut. And the piece of glass doesn't scratch with the razor blade. It gives you a nice hard surface to press down on. And just follow the template, just a whisper bigger. 
you give yourself a, like a little rain gutter so when you come back and do the other side you'll create a resin bead around the wood fin you could make it bigger I suppose if you wanted to but these fins are pretty small The excess and ready for the next one. You can see, can you see the little resin bead? And then when they come back and lay the glass on the other side, that'll fill up that little gutter, that little trough in there will fill up with resin, and then you'll have a glass bead on your fin. There. And there you go. Here's the flat side. Little glass bead. And when I come back and lay the piece on this side, it'll hang over, fill up the little rain gutter, and uh, completely seal off the wood fin. All the fins are trimmed and they're flipped over. And uh, okay, well, it's time to get the uh, do the second side and get the rest of the resin. See the solar res the solar res will send the shade and the shadows. It'll never get hard. It needs the UV rays to uh, activate it, and I just. Start wetting the fins all over again on the other side. Oh, the fins are all saturated. I'm done with the solar res, so the excess, I'm just going to uh, I'm gonna wipe off my brush a little bit. I'm going to clean that in the acetone. With this excess resin, I'll just pour it back into the uh, solar res bucket and save it for the next job. Save this. You know, this, this jar is just about, uh, this quart's about empty. I've done a number of fins on this guy, you can see by the cutouts. But what's left is ready to go for the next time. Okay, this is the second side, and just repeat the same thing as the first side. Then after I'm done trimming all the fins, what I'm going to do is put them back in the rack and put them back in the sun for oh, another two minutes or so, and then that'll completely cure them. And then I'm, I can take the uh, grinder and trim the excess off. This is basically the same thing as the first side, just repeat the process over again. There. That right there is where the cloth didn't get wet, but that's okay. The sander will fix that. This part is really easy because that side's flat. It lays right down on the glass. Yeah. And the bead. And then I'll come back, I'm going to trim this up, I'll even it up with the, uh, with the grinder and it's ready for the laminator. Okay, all the fins are laminated and they're all trimmed and what I'm going to do now is set them back outside for, uh, actually it only takes about three, two more minutes. But the longer they set, the, the, after three minutes it doesn't matter, the rest is hard. Might as well be on a board out in the sun at the beach.
Okay, uh, those are all the fins I just uh, finished laminating and I collected them and now I'm going to put them in the, uh, the vise here and touch them up just a little bit with the grinder. I'm going to uh, clean up the halo or the bead and then after I do that I'm going to hit it real fast with the sander just to make it smooth so the guy that puts on the fins just has a nice flat surface. And after I'm done with that, the very last thing I do is take a jigsaw and cut off this tab and then clean up the bottom that tacks on the, onto the board. So I'm going to suit up and um, give you a demonstration. Uh, this one is a grinder. It's a little mini grinder. It's pretty handy for this kind of stuff. Um, it's just a grinding disc. Thumb control. And then this is a sander with uh, 80 grit on it. With a, with a semi soft pad, but it's an old used pad. You can, it just, it's an old beat up one, it doesn't really matter that much. I just barely touch them. Barely. It's just clean up, it's just a little finish work. Makes it easier on the, the next guy. And the next thing I do is, uh, I'll, after I cut this tab off, I take a little sandpaper and tr clean everything up. Okay, um, here we go, the last part. Fins uh, sanded and uh, pretty cleaned up. I just need to uh, scribe a little straight line to give myself something to follow here, just to be on the safe side. Take the jigsaw and chop it off. Doesn't take long. And then I come back with the uh, the grinder and just true that up. And if you're doing glass on fins, it's kind of a good idea to put just a little bit of an arc here so when you place the fin down on the board it hits flat because if it if it was bowed it would rock and when you put it on with the tape it uh, it's just harder to do this makes it easier and the last thing I do is uh, take a piece of sandpaper and just kind of chew up the just get that real sharp edge off it you don't want to hurt anybody especially yourself and uh, a little sand and on these, these kind of fins that are the quads or the tries, they have a little bit of a tilt when you glass them on the board, so it helps the guy the next phase if you put this a little bit of tilt on the sand it flat. And there you go. A little bit of bead. And next, this will be put on the board. Uh, put some rope on both sides. And then a layer of fiberglass all the way up this side, all the way up this side, maybe more. But uh, one will do it. Nice piece of rope, and then uh, then you're ready to go. Then you got glass on pins, glass on wood pins, and these are extremely light as compared to fiberglass pins. Here's some fiberglass ones that are just cut out. It probably weighs a quarter of what a fiberglass pin weighs. Good. There you go. And I just gonna do all the same thing. All of these. <laughs>